Alrighty. La la la. Everything should be up and running. Uh, things look a little bit different. It's because I spent most of last weekend rearranging the office, so that's also why my ZBrush 2018 videos aren't done. But let me go to my streaming topics, because there was something I wanted to do this morning. Um, octopus render controlling curves. Yeah, let's start with that. So let's go over. I'm going to launch Keyshot here real quick. Hey, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Thebalt Dubruili. Uh, oh, yep, software update. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Sure. Let's put that on our... Hold on. Okay. While that's going, I'm going to load up the octopus here. And honestly, hold on just a second. Recorder. Let me position the screen so we can see it nicely. So on the octopus render here, uh, if I double click this material, all the, well, this is only one object in here, I believe it should be, turntable animation and then uh, the object itself. So i kill the animation window. And yes, if we go over here, let's keep that for a second. Um, so yeah, if I double click this, it's gonna go to the material settings, uh, everything's, it's a translucent material uh, with a white, just a white color, a little bit of red in the subsurface to give it a little softness on the uh, subsurface. Translucency set at two. Uh, nothing else super interesting in the base material, and there's nothing really interesting about this material at all, but in case you're wondering, um, it was a translucent material as it's kind of its parent material. Then over here I have an occlusion. Uh, texture. So if I want to see what this is doing, um, I can right click this or I can hit C to preview color. So I'm basically taking this occlusion and then I'm inverting that occlusion and then I'm taking this into the contrast and also taking this triplanar noise node here. Uh, let's go ahead and hit C on this one so you can see there's a little bit of noise in here and I'm putting that into the color, the AO inverted into the contrast and then also uh, looks like a little bit of noise here. Uh, another bump texture here. And then I'm plugging that into the translucency to get the whole effect. So here, yeah, so I'm taking these areas right here that are in white and then adding that to the contrast here. And it looks like hues at zero, saturations at one, values at one. Hmm, let's see if we take this. I just want to make sure this occlusion, so the occluded here is black. If we put this at unoccluded at black. Interesting. Something like that. So anyway, that was the key shot material here. I'm going to go ahead and finish. Loading key shot here. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Um, hey everybody. Let's see. Okay, so we're installing key shot. Uh, what is what else do I want to do today? Um, I do need to do controlling curves. This is something we've talked about previously in several episodes, but I'm recording now, and I want to put that out as a separate piece here. And also hollowing out objects using live booleans, and then also duplicating shrink and adding cylinders here. So let me try and wake up a little bit. Uh, la, la. Okay, everything else showing up okay. My my neck is too too hot on this light. Okay, uh, controlling curves. Let's go ahead and finish installing Keyshot Seven. Pull this out here. 
Okay, so let's grab something, anything. Let's load up something fun to play with. Let's go to our streaming section. And if we wanted to say make a, a statue out of something and we wanted to hollow it out, well, that's a couple ways we could do that. So we have our object here. And eh, the first thing I would probably do is just go through here and let me go ahead and turn on the line cursor surface. Uh, make sure there's nothing like sitting there floating and this tongue might be floating. So I'm gonna make sure it's kind of set in the mouth here. And also looking for any other holes because when I go through and dynamesh this thing, I don't want any major issues. So I'm gonna make sure everything's plugged in around his body, around his shell. The only other problem might be this bib thing here. If I wanted to, I could turn on polyframe here. If I go into solo, hit shift D. Uh, oh, looks like we've actually subdivided this thing. Go down to subdivision level one, you're gonna see we have a back polygroup here. So if I hit W and then control tap on this back polygroup and then just pull this in. Yeah, we can just kind of anchor this into his body. And then maybe even, let's go ahead and hold down Alt and Shift and just pull this so that it just goes straight into his body like this. So that way, um, let me go all the way back up. So that way there's a few fewer issues, a few fewer areas where this stuff can go a little bit haywire. Um, also, I'd wanna make sure that everything's nice and smooth how we want it. Uh, this one right now, if I do Shift D is gonna be the actual resolution. I do D, it goes into dynamic subdivisions under here. So let's go ahead and under our dynamic properties here, change our smooth subdivision levels up to three on this one. And this one, we can just hit Control D to subdivide one more time. And then on this one here, we can Control D like so, and then maybe this one back here. We'll hit D for dynamic and D for dynamic and subdivide one more time. So everything's at the resolution that we want it at, as far as I can tell. Now, um, I wanna go ahead and merge all of this together so I can dynamesh it. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna go over here to the Z plugin and I'm going to go to Clean Tool Master. If you haven't downloaded this and installed it, um, you can get this from the Pixelogic download website here, YouTube, let me load up my usual suspects here. Google Pixelogic Downloads, go to Pixelogic Download Center and go to ZBrush Plugins or just go to this link here in the chat. And before I merge everything, uh, if I was to merge this now uh, over here under Subtool, Merge, Visible, and you click on it, you're gonna see everything that had a dynamic subdivision is now very low res, not what I wanted. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And with my original selected here, I'm gonna go down here to where it says Dyn S Div to S Div. If you hover over that, that's gonna convert your dynamic subdivisions to traditional subdivisions. Um, and you can do it to all. And everything that's visible, it'll go ahead and do that too. And now that that's happened, uh, I can do a merge visible and everything should be the exact resolution that I wanted. So um, we've got this guy here. Let's go ahead and dynamesh him into one solid piece. Now this is going to be different than these, we've, what we've been talking about with say like the snake hook where you go in here and it's like, oh, I can use dynamic tessellation here. Well, this isn't going to um, weld all of these things into one part. I can do this and I can loop it back around and go into another part here. Actually, let's go ahead and mask this out so we can do that like so. So we can put these things together. Let's so make this smaller, I guess. And let's inflate it. Uh, but once they're smoothed out, they, they're never going to stick together. So that's a feature of this one, of the dynamic tessellation here. But uh, that's not what we want in this case. So we want to make this one solid block. So I'm going to go over here, uh, turn off blur, turn off project, and we'll hit Dynamesh with a resolution 128. It's a little low. Uh, you can use Dynamesh Master for this. Uh, I don't know if it's in here by default or not. There's just Dynamesh Master. Uh, so Dynamesh Master over here, you can have uh, turn off blur, turn off project, uh, blur modifier if turned off, legacy blurring will be used. Cool. And then how many, and you can also create shell in here as well. Mm hmm. 
We'll be doing that manually, but that's uh, another option you can do. And a lot of cool stuff in here. I don't use Dynamesh Master all that often, as you can tell, but definitely check that out. And if you don't have that installed, again, I don't remember if that's installed by default on 2018 or not. Um, give that a shot. So, well, here's another thing we can do. So if we take this object here, well, I'll go ahead and do that. We're going to duplicate this thing off. And if you wanted to Dynamesh this at whatever resolution you want, just to get all the main forms here, and we go into solo mode, it's like, okay, everything looks fine. It's all Dynamesh together. So I'm going to take this select rectangle and just get rid of half. And I'm just doing a quick look through here to make sure that there's no major interior spots that I should be concerned about. Um, like the inside of the shell is something that I don't want. So I'm going to go back through here and I'm going to look and you're going to see, oh, there's a hole right there. So there's two ways I can combat this. I can go through here and number one, I can go back to the original if I delete that one. I can isolate this, do Control Shift A, mask it, invert that mask, and then just go through here manually and stuff all this back in here. You can use inflate, uh, whatever you'd want to do, and of course probably I'd want to use um, symmetry on this. Since I don't have symmetry turned on, I'd have to do the other side, but since he is a symmetrical object, I might be able to get away with doing one side first, and then doing a quick mirror, and then mirror and weld. There we go. And now he's symmetrical on both sides. I'm going to turn on X symmetry to turn on uh, symmetry there. So now when I Dynamesh this one down, uh, everything will be fine. So I'm going to duplicate this off again. And we'll go ahead and Dynamesh him. And now when we go look, we can see there's no interior faces here. Um, another thing we could have done is we could have just kept dropping that Dynamesh resolution down. And the lower you drop it down, it's just like the voxelization in Houdini. Um, it gets lower res, but it captures, it gets more pieces here. So now you can see, oh, his tail is stuck to his um, shell. If you want that, that's fine. If you don't, we can probably change that too. So let's go ahead and say, isolate this tail here. And let's go ahead and just do a quick, let's hold down control and tap to blur that a little. I'm just gonna rotate this down. And let's go through here and we'll smooth that transition out just a bit. There we go. So now these two are apart. If I want to raise, whoops, raise the shell up, go ahead and mask just that, and we'll give it a little bit more breathing room. So we're back here. We're going to duplicate this off, and we're going to dynamesh this thing. And the lower you Dynamesh resolution this thing, the more holes it's going to close, but the more detail you're going to lose. So if we Dynamesh this at a very, very low resolution, you're going to see uh, even lower than that. There we go. So we've got all the holes closed, but we're just losing resolution at this point. So if you wanted to get your detail back, what you could do is you got both of these showing your original and then your newly lower res Dynamesh. Um, and you just wanted to lower it to close all of the little interior spaces that you may have found and you didn't want to go through and inflate and clean up a bunch of stuff, you can just hit Control D to subdivide and then do a project all under subtool. And that'll go ahead and give you the envelope that you need and then you can project your details back whoa, to, so here's, here's my new projected one and then here's my original. So you can see we're getting that detail back with a pretty solid envelope in there. And now that we have that, um, and that's if you wanted to do that. If you didn't, then you could just crank this resolution back up on this Dynamesh and then re-Dynamesh after you've projected. And then I'll go ahead and clean it up. And then we're getting some nasty stuff underneath this neck here. So another thing you can do is you can do a little bit of cleanup work. I am gonna just go ahead and inflate this stuff up just to get rid of those little spider webs there. Cool. And now I think we're ready for uh, hollowing this guy out. Oh, looks like I got a little bit of. Okay. So if we wanted to um, hollow this guy out, I'm going to look for a place, maybe the bottom of his feet, that we would want to uh, make him hollow here. So I'm going to go to my. You can go BI brush insert and then go over here to, what are we looking for here? Insert primitives, or I can go to my custom primitive menu here and just drop in some cylinders here. 
And the reason I'm not do holding down Alt at the moment is because I just want to see where these things are going to end up. You can turn down, you can, let's turn on local symmetry here. You can turn on, of course, um, double sided under display properties. So you can see it because uh, Alt's going to invert that insert selection. But we can go ahead and say, okay, I want to hollow this guy out and I'm going to do an insert mesh brush right here to do that. Uh, so if you turn on polyframe, you're going to see he's a bunch of polygroups here, and then we have these as just one polygroup. So if I want, I can isolate this and go over here to polygroups now and do group by Dynamesh sub. And then when I go up here to, um, well, if I just control drag and Dynamesh this thing, you're going to see it does a Dynamesh sub, just, what we, just how we told it to do. However, what we want to do is make this guy hollow. So I'm going to go over here to... Geometry, uh, Dynamesh. And under here under Create Shell, we have a thickness. Let's crank that up to like 13. And then when we hit Create Shell, it's going to look at this. It's going to subtract into the object where those cylinders are. And then it's going to create a thickness on the inside of this mesh at whatever thickness we chose. <gasps> okay. Sorry, I'm behind on the chat already. Hey, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Uh, how do you mass base on a surface like the top of a cylinder without using polygroup? That would be with the, oh, hopefully this thing finishes its thing. I guess this is a semi-complex surface to do a thickness on. When this comes back, we can talk about that. Actually, that'll be another, another thing I can... Oh, you know what? There is a... There we go. We'll just we'll just do it real quick. But okay, so if I turn off polyframe here, you're gonna see it uh, it subdivided in, and then also gave me a thickness all the way through the mesh. So if I hold down Control Shift and then we hide this and we turn on double, you're gonna see all throughout this mesh we now have a thickness of 13. And of course, it was set to four by default, and that would have been fine too. I just overcranked it just for demonstration purposes. Uh, and it should have also given us an interior space here. So if you just isolate this, you're going to see um, what that thickness is. If you wanted to, for whatever reason, smooth this out, you can just isolate just that polygroup here. And we'll go to, you can do deformation smooth. Um, I'm, I like to do polish by features. And we'll do open circle. And because there's no real features on here, we can just smooth that out very quickly just to soften that up a bit. And now you can see the interior polygons are a lot smoother. So now that we have all that, uh, we got them hollowed out and now you can do whatever you need to. And you can also go through here if you didn't want these parts hollow or if you wanted to just, again, isolate this interior space and then go down here to display properties, turn off double and then hit flip. You can go through here and you can sculpt out any details that you didn't want. So like if you didn't want these nostrils to be sculpted out or anything like that, or if you wanted to clean any of this stuff up, um, you can treat this as kind of whatever you want. Um, another option to this, if we go over here and we delete this one, we can also try and use like a live Boolean situation. This guy's a little bit complex for that. Um, let's, let's start with something a little bit easier here. So I'm going to go into Make Polymesh 3D. And let's say, uh, let's, let's modify this just a little bit. Oh, here's one thing that pops up all the time. So if I isolate this top cylinder here and then invert that and then delete hidden, geometry modified topology, delete hidden, and then we go to close con convex hole and we want to like do that interactive elevation. It's not going to do that because there's 32-ish um, divisions on here. So what I would have to do is I'm going to hit W. Well, you can go back to your cylinder 3D here. And if you go to initialize and you say change this H divide to 24 and then hit make poly mesh 3D and then get rid of that top piece, close convex hole, then it'll, it should work. Maybe not. Did I grab the right one? Cylinder. Yeah, 24. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. That should work. Let's see. Interactive curvature. Yes. You know what? Let's see if we can find exactly what that number is. Cylinder 32. 
um, so 32, 24, drop it down to 6, oops, 16, make polymesh 3D. There we go, so 16 works, 24 didn't. So somewhere between 16 and 24 um, would be the magic number you're looking for there, I suppose, to maintain that functionality. So now that we have this, um, oh yeah, we're gonna hollow this out using Boolean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a crease tolerance uh, under your cre geometry crease menu. I'm also gonna do a crease PG and we're gonna turn on dynamic subdivisions uh, with a crease level set to three and a smooth subdiv set to four. There you go. So we get a nice uh, shape like this. Now let's say I wanted to uh, hollow this out using live Boolean. So what I would do is I would duplicate this off. And to shrink this down along its surface normal, what I can do is I could Q-mesh all polygons and then I can hold down shift. Let's turn on solo mode here. I can hold down shift and that'll just kind of shrink it along its surface normals. Um, if I don't want this bottom piece to act like that, I can go ahead and delete that, and then as I push it along its surface normals, it'll just kind of shrink in. Uh, we can, and the other cool thing about this is I can do it dynamically. So let's go ahead and, well, let's go ahead and close this temporarily. And then on this bottom piece here, I need something to go through the mesh. Uh, so what I can do is I can isolate this, make that, and then again, hold down shift. Let's do Q mesh polygroup all and then hold down shift, we can just pull along here. So if I go out of solo mode, you're gonna see we shrunk this down and we've poked a hole through the bottom. So uh, what I would do now is turn on the live Boolean render up here. I think I have that assigned to Alt R. And then um, I need to turn this to subtractive. And now you can see on the fly, if I go through here, let's turn on polyframe here and turn off polyframe. You can see we can, on, we can update what this is gonna look like hollowed out. Um, and also if we go through here and eh, you know, let's keep that off. Let's go into solo mode here and let's go ahead and say, I want to take, let's do shifty. I'm going to say poly group, poly loop, this one, this one, and this one. And then I'm going to Q mesh those out. So now when I go into R and hit D, turn off polyframe, this is what that live Boolean uh, is going to look like. So this is just another way to hollow out your mesh. You duplicate it, you shrink it down along the surface normal, or you deflate it under the deformation menu, deformation inflate negative value. And then you would need to add something like on the bottom of Bowser's junior feet, you'd have to add cylinders to kind of poke through the mesh. And then that'll give you uh, that result. But if we go back here and we say, uh, let's go ahead and apply these subdivisions so they're real. And then let's go ahead and Dynamesh this and let's hit control W to make it all in polygroup and let's say we wanted to mask just this part right here So if I hold down control And we have brush over here, and then we have modifiers open I'm sorry depth open so if I hold down control You're gonna see the depth is set here with mask pin and if I just start masking let's turn off polyframe here um, It's gonna to go to the edge and it's gonna start bleeding over right um, another thing you can do is you can hold down control go to modifiers uh, no, not modifiers. Auto masking. Turn on back face masking, and then I think as you, as long as you keep that camera away from where you're looking, uh, it should go ahead and stop that mask from bleeding over to the edge. So if you just kind of rotate around. This is another way to kind of keep you just masking on those top planes there. Uh, alternatively, or in conjunction with that, what you can do is you hold down Control, go to Cur Depth. Um, if you turn on depth mask and you take this bottom one and you move it all the way up, uh, not all the way up, you don't want it to be at zero, but very close to it. Um, what that's gonna do is I don't even need to have the camera turned away from me. I can just use this and it'll look at, it'll find this edge and it'll mask it off um, automatically for me. So you can kind of use that to quickly do that. Um, another one you can do, let's try this. Let's grab a cylinder on here and let's split mass points, and let's crease dynamic, uh, crease level all the way up. There we go. Apply, 
So uh, now that we have, uh, d -d -d -d, let's turn off white boolean here and get rid of this one. So now that we have these two separate objects, instead of merging them down and then grouping this as a DynaMesh sub, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this one below. I'm going to make it to subtractive, and then I'm going to merge these together. And you're going to see when I do that, this turns into a white polygroup, which I probably should have just pushed this in further. So that's already um, added as a DynaMesh sub. So now when I DynaMesh this, it'll go ahead and subtract it out. So you hit Control W, make this all in polygroup. You don't have to do that. You can use those polygroups as masking as well, but just for demonstration purposes, um, we hold down Control, our depth mask is set here. We can see it's going to stop along those edges. If we change this depth mask to go from the top, and we can go from the inside and it'll stop here. It won't stop here. It'll still want to bleed over, but if you have interior faces, it'll go ahead and um, stop at that edge too. So if you notice, I have, or I should have, yeah, I have mask exterior, max interior, mask interior uh, loaded by default. So at any point I can go through here and say, I want to mask exterior. And then I go ahead and stop these edges along here. Or I can go mask interior and I can mask these interior faces if I ever need to. And how you do that is you just hold down control, you set your depth mask, and then you go to brush, save as, and you can put this in your ZBrush 2018, Z startup, brush presets, and then just save them in here. And then every time you start up ZBrush, you'll have those available to you. So live booleans and um, masking. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot to set this to 1080p. Sorry about that. Um, so let's see. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Um, you know what I could do? Uh, I was gonna say I could stop it. The problem is I walk in here about three minutes before I need to go live and I am very ill-prepared usually because it's so early. Oh, so early. Um, so why would you give thickness to your model as a first certain workflow? Good question. I don't usually give thickness to my model. I think people who do that just want to have a little bit more control. So when you go to 3D print these things, you usually want to print it hollow and then you can add infrastructure in that to make give it uh, more rigidity but you don't have to waste tons of material building up a solid object. Um, I think most 3D printers will give you that control and allow you to hollow out an object but I think you know if you want to like I said if you want a little bit more hands-on controlling how your object is hollowed out and exactly how thick it is um, you could use ZBrush to do that first and then when you go to 3D print it out maybe. That's why. Cool, cool. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, okay, so Red Hatred says, I use the new testmate function in ZBrush 2018 for internal surfaces of hollowed out models. If you want to print it, it works pretty good as you don't need dense polygons on the inside. Oh, that's a good, that's a good point. So uh, do I still have that one? Dang, I may have deleted it. So you can use this function down here, this tessimate, and um, I guess we just hit tessimate, see what that does. And now you can just set tessimate. Yeah, that keeps them all separate, but if this is all dynamesh together, um, you could go through here and you could tessimate manually as well. You can also use, uh, let's try this. Another thing you can do is this is all merged, right? And let's go ahead and set that back to one. Or let's drag it down so we get our original back. Okay, so we've got our original here. I'm going to go ahead and we'll DynaMesh this again. And let's say you wanted to sculpt more detail on this thing, um, but you don't want to have the overhead of all of these polygons here. So we go in here and we start sculpting with um, sculpture mode turned on. Um, and actually, it's pretty responsive, which is pretty good. And you're going to see it's tess tessellating um, on the fly. 
What we can do is we can go over here to our Z plugin and we can do decimation master preprocess current. Wait for it. Oh. Uh, I also still am not able to link my Discord to restream. It tells me the password is wrong, so sorry about that. Discord. Um, okay, so we got that pre-processed, and then we'll go over here, we'll say like 50k. So we're going to drop it down from a million points down to 50. That's a little bit low. Let's go 100. Let's go 200. He's got a lot of smooth surfaces. There we go. So let's say this is the resolution uh, we want, and we just drop that considerably lower, but we still want to add, go through here and clean up or add detail to our object, then with um, sculptures mode turned on, you can get as, just go here and smooth, and then punch in any sort of detail or go in with your Damien standard brush, and you can just use smooth to kind of up the resolution, and then go through here and hold down alt. So that way you don't have the overhead, and when you're done with this as well, you can just, you could just continue to, let's make that smaller here. There we go. So that way you can keep this all relatively low and only put the detail where you need it. And then when you're done with this, you can decimate it back down again if you want. So keep your file sizes reasonable. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Yes, and as um, Predrag uh, mentions, when you see that white polygroup, that is and we can do this too. So I'm going to go ahead and drop in a sphere. So as you can see, this sphere right here by default uh, is purple. So if I control drag, it'll dynamesh this down. Let's go ahead and drop that resolution a bit. It'll dynamesh this uh, as an additive. If I go through here and I hold down Alt, you're not going to be able to see it. So you're going to want to go down here to double and turn that on. And then actually went inside the object here. So you can see that it when you hold down Alt, if we do this again, and you know what, let's change that depth here. You change the depth on an insert mesh brush. There we go. So now when you hold down Alt, these are all subtractive. They're all white polygroups, so that means it's going to subtract out. Um, but if you want to go through here and you want to make this one subtractive, you can isolate it and then polygroup under the polygroup menu. Uh, group is Dynamesh Sub, and that'll turn it into a subtractive mesh. As well as if you have uh, an object here, and we go ahead and do a split mass points and we merge these together, but this one is set to subtractive, and when we merge these down, this is gonna be a subtractive mesh, as, as opposed to an additive. So a couple different ways you can do subtractive meshes there. Cool. Uh, I can talk about the transpose unit in ZBrush. Um, if you're talking about this, under preferences, transpose, um, the unit scale, setting units. This is basically if we have, oh boy, you know what? I might do, I'd have to go through, let's take our, let's go demo soldier here. And let's say delete other. So if we wanted to like use this as a head count, we can go here, hold down shift, and we can move this off, whoops. I guess we can hold that shift. Move this off to the side. Man, it's been a while since I've used transpose. Um, so right here, you can see, oh, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he is about eight heads tall. So if we hold down this outer one here. You can see uh, we can set these major and minor tick marks to whatever we want. Now setting those, let's see if I can do this off of memory. Oh boy, here we go. So uh, if I want to go from like, say the top of his head to the bottom of his head and set that as a unit, I can just drag this out and I'm just tapping on the model here and then holding down shift and dragging it off the model. And then I'll go ahead and just go up a straight line here. So chin to the top of the head, uh, set there. And if I want to go unit sales, set units, set distance units, uh, we'll say heads. 
and then minor ticks per head we'll say four uh, wait minor ticks uh, we'll say one and then major ticks we'll say four calibration distance sure and that yeah head sure or not transpose unit scale distance unit scale factor set units yeah that's what I want hmm so how do I update this thing as you can see I don't do this very often but it's something like this at being able to set a unit based on your transpose length and then set it you know half and then half again and whatever your major and minor ticks that you want um, There we go. Okay, there it updated. So uh, I did one minor tick and one major tick, and then I hit uh, set units and named it. And then now what we have is, well, it still didn't put it where I wanted it. Hmm. So it updated the major and minor ticks, but it didn't set the unit scale. Well, I guess you could just drag it here. That seems kind of weird. Let's say one. So unit scale set to one. That seems weird. It seems like you would be able to set that calibration distance. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Or you guys can. I'm sure there's a better video than what I just did. I would hope. Uh, hello from Russia. Thanks for showing up. Uh, custom UI for 2018 should be up. Um, let me double check that. Come road. If you go to um, give me a second and let's also do oh you know what I never sent out any sort of mail about that. I was going to wait till 2018 was actually done before I did that. I like spamming people too much. Um, but if you go to my products, so you can get this on for free on Gumroad or CubeBrush, and I'm going to go to Intro to ZBrush Files, way down at the bottom. Oh, come on. Yes, sign in. Jeez. Uh, so, for instance, if you go to Gumroad here, um, D -D -D. Well, I'll just link you to this. Hold on just a second. Okay, so you go to Pavlovich Gumroad here, and you scroll all the way down to the very bottom, and you go to Enter to ZBrush Files, and we look at it. Um, there should be the new 2018 startup in there that'll give you all of this stuff. And this has actually been updated since then, since the last couple. So it'll be a little bit different than maybe what you're used to, but that was the latest one I had, so I just threw it up there. Uh, same thing on QBrush. It's towards the bottom here, enter to ZBrush files. Let's see if this one has um, the contents in here. Three files, um, Z Startup 2018 is the one you're looking for. And there should be instructions in there on setting that up. Uh, best way to cut the model in sections so if you want to cut his hands off to different parts. So if we go back here to this merged one, and boy, we messed him up pretty good. Let's say, uh, yeah, we did merge that afterwards. You know what? I want to clear, well, okay, let's do this. Uh, I don't want to do that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and dynamesh this guy back. And we want to put these hands on a separate uh, group here. So we can hold down control shift and isolate those. And if you didn't have a poly group, and then we could just do a quick split hidden. And then if we redynamesh this, it'll go ahead and close holes for us on this side and as well as on this subtool here. 
Uh, if you didn't, if we go ahead and merge these back down, and then dynamesh them again. Uh, if you didn't have a polygroup, if you just had all one polygroup here, what you could do is you can go through here and you could put in a, hold on, control shift and go in here and slice and you can slice it off, which in this case will work because um, it's we have a fairly straight line. Um, if you don't want to slice all the way through your object, you can hold down control shift. You see how it's still set to slice. If you tap control, that'll temporarily uh, put you back in select rectangle, hold down alt, and then I get rid of. Okay, I need to drop my truck off at the mechanics before I go to work. Uh, so again, you can hold down just control and now to get rid of that visibility. Let's go ahead and turn on X symmetry here. There we go. All right, one more time. Uh, if you don't want to, and if you don't want to have to do that, the only reason I'm doing that is so I can maintain slice functionality uh, without having to resort to going up here and going, yeah, let me switch over to select lasso, which sometimes if you just need to do it quickly is easy enough and then go back to slice curve. But with any uh, modifier over here, you can hold, hit tap control and toggle back and forth. Anyways, go through here and slice. It's only going to be on one. Even though we had X symmetry turned on, you're going to have to do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. That's mirror, um, uh, mirror under deformations and then mirror and weld under geometry, modify topology. So we went ahead and sliced those into the new poly group here. And then you can go ahead and split those off. Yeah, if you didn't have such a nice clean area to do that, let's hit control W. Let's see, am I still getting some air in here? Yeah, sorry about that lighting. Okay, so uh, if we wanted to say like, take his arm off, what I do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn off line here and we can just mask exactly where we want this cut line to be. And you could sp make this into a poly group and then split it off there. Um, we did go over, I think doing uh, more complex cuts. I'm gonna go through my live streams uh, recordings and then just chop them up and put them under live stream highlights again. I need to do another pass at that. I've just got too many projects right at the moment that I need to finish up first. But um, you could also put a Boolean object in there. So if you didn't, if you wanted to have like a little bit more control over exactly how that cut through, we can just do a quick um, cube, for example. And let's go ahead and hit Y so we can get our gizmo back. So we can use this to slice through, make this as thick or as thin as you want. And if we go ahead and do split mass points, set this to live Boolean, and then put this to subtractive here. Um, you can use this to put that slice wherever you want or, and or make this as detailed as you want. So if we go in here and we do like an insert uh, single edge loop, and then we do a, um, Bevel, boy, solo mode, bevel, edge loop complete. Oh, that's why, let's turn the line back on. And then, you know what, let's do inset, um, inset edge, what am I looking for here? Poly loop, inset poly loop, no. I guess we just bevel both of these. Let's bevel this one and then tap this one. And then if we hit W and then control tap this polygroup here, we can Boy, that's come on. W, control tap this polygroup. It's grabbing a little bit more than I'd want. So let's do this. Let's do mask poly loop invert that mask, set how we want that normal direction of pull. And now we can just make our cuts through here. Let's, do we have local symmetry turned on? But it's still, oh, you know what? Hmm. Come on, straighten that out. Uh, pain in the butt. Let's do this. Okay, anyway, so now we can make complex cuts through here and we can do like a crease and turn on dynamic and set that to whatever we want, or we can increase all. But you can use booleans, and you can also do that with, um, if we go back here, if you were to mask this out, 
you could make um, a Ziri mesh of these complex forms back here and then give it thickness and then set key registration on the male and female side uh, in whatever shape you want using Ziri mesh and thickness, but I don't know. You'd have to, that's a, it's a bit of work. Um, oh, uh, happy. <laughs> Uh, you will, I promise there's nothing, uh, that I do that is uh, amazing or unobtainable. I am, I'm pretty much a hack. So anything you see me do, uh, that seems amazing, it's, it's absolutely not amazing. I promise you that. It's just practice. I spent too much time in this program is the problem. Uh, transpose unit, set the distance of the head, and just press tab when you set the distance. Let's try that. So, let's go back to our demo soldier here. You know, and some of that probably, set units, hold down control. Um, set units, what is it, be any value, set the transpose line as centimeters, type centimeters, type millimeters, type millimeters, or heads as the unit for working on anatomy. Okay. Unit scale, yes, major and minor calibration distance, current action line. Top of the head, then set the calibration distance to one. Okay, set the head of your character to be one head unit, then draw out the action line to be at the top and bottom of the head, then set the calibration distance to one. Okay, let's give that a shot. So let's hit Y. Turn off sculptor's mode, and then hit W, and then Y. Well, now it's exactly one. So if I set calibration distance to one, there we go. So drag out the length, set calibration distance to one, and now this will be one head unit, two head units. So let's test this. Well, no. I'd have to move this line down, but so we've set our head units here, and then two head units down as the chest. Three, four head units. Okay, so that was it. We'll do a uh, a nicer version of that. So okay, <clears throat> new recording, and we'll go to. This is going to show you the inside, the little behind the scenes on how I make myself look smarter than I really am. So. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up to my channel. We're going to learn how to use the transpose uh, units here to set head units. So how we're going to do that is hit W to make your gizmo, right? And then we're going to go up here, let's turn off light boolean. We can go uh, where we have gizmo 3D. If you hover over that, that's going to say Y. To toggle that on or off, when you toggle it off, you're going to have this transpose line. Um, by default, you're probably going to have a bunch of, you know, whatever distances this thing is set to. I wonder if there's a way to see. This is another thing I'd have to edit out. <laughs> I'm trying to make this all. There we go. So if you have your transpose line set to these uh, units here, uh, what you can do is you can set those to uh, centimeters or millimeters or head units. And in this case, we're going to do head units like this. So we're going to take the transpose line, go from the chin to the top of the head here as our one unit. And then we're going to set our calibration distance to one. And then minor ticks, we can set, the, let's set both of these to one um, at first. So now we have this set to uh, one head unit. So if we keep dragging this up, you're going to see we go up here and now we have two head units uh, from the top. If we want to, we can do minor ticks uh, per unit. So we change this to two. You're going to see where it's divided a head unit in half. If we set that um, to four, we can have quarter head units here. So you're going to see with one head unit top to the bottom, halfway down the head is the eye line. Here's the hair line. And then here's the nose uh, line from here. And then nose to chin. If we keep dragging this down and we go like chin straight down, it's going to be the bottom of the rib cage. So if we go from the top of the head to the bottom of the foot and we move this out, you're going to see we have one head down, two head down is chest line, three heads down is the navel, four heads down is the crotch, five heads down is just above the knee, six heads down is here, seven heads down, and a half head. So seven and a half heads for this character. And then I give myself a little out, just to, for editing purposes. And then it looked like I even knew what I was doing with transpose units. 
something we learned together, but in editing will make me look like I know what I'm doing. Am um, I a ZBrush Jedi or ZBrush Guru? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think I'm much of anything. I'm, a, I'm an enthusiastic young man about ZBrush. Uh, what's your opinion on working on topology first and then doing high res stuff in ZBrush? For me, it's a comfortable method, but I don't know how worthwhile it can be. Um, that's probably my least favorite way to work. It's not very... Uh, if you're good at that, I would say absolutely do that. I am. The reason I don't do that is I'm terrible at that. If you told me to model this guy in low poly first and then come in here and do like detail work on it, it would take me days to figure out how to low poly model this thing first. Uh, whereas in ZBrush, it takes me just a couple hours to block this thing out. Um, a better example of that probably is go to streaming here. So this one, this was like a four hour sculpt, but I would, me, me trying to sculpt this thing or do the low res first and then do high poly. Um, and also even something that, trying to think of anything that would be easier to do in low poly. I guess if it was a very simple object, I would do low poly, possibly in an external program, but also I would do low poly in here too, um, using ZModeler. If it's that simple, I would just use ZModeler. Um, but for instance, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, let's go to Houdini. Oh hell, any, any of this stuff. So sample files, um, boop, 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 boop. So even this thing, like sculpt or you know, creating these these pieces in low poly and then coming in here and just doing like, oh, okay, now that I've got everything figured out, I'll come in here and do like this work. Uh, it was still easier for me just to create all this in ZBrush than it was would be for me otherwise trying to do it low poly first. Um, and then the other cool thing about that is it gives you a little bit more exploration bucks and then you can go through here and you can decide now that you have your high res here you can go through here and go okay uh this is where exactly where i want the low poly to be and then you can either just decimate it down uh try to do a procedural method if you can or just go and hand low poly this exactly as it needs to be as opposed to doing your low poly first coming in here and doing details and going oh you know what i wish i had uh this extra chunk or resolution or the low poly it's just a little bit too much planning for me, I guess. Cool. Uh, helps in bronze casting. I think this shell has been an issue. Oh, very cool. Bronze casting. Uh, uh, yeah, and I, even when I'm doing... Uh, so speaking of... Um, Prejack says, I live and die by polygroups, Paul Gabry. That is very true. In fact, even when I do box modeling and other programs, I really miss having the ability to just have polygroup assignments instead of doing things like in Maya would be, the equivalent would be um, selection sets. They're just really, really painful to use. Whereas in ZBrush, um, did we mess this one up too bad? Let's say let's go all the way back here. Pre... Yeah, yeah, I guess we did move, mess that up too bad. This one, shifty. Yeah, I guess we can use this one. So, uh, for example, this one, got all these polygroups that we're able to uh, adjust on the fly here. So if we did want to do it like an inset polygroup all, these selections are already made, or I can just do an inset region like so, and then cube mesh polygroup all, and pull these all in. Uh, and not have to select edge rings or anything like that, but even if, if I didn't have all of these polygroups available to me, all I would have to do is do the groups by normals and get these polygroups back, or if I needed to, just manually go through and do um, like polygroup poly loop. And then I can set like this one and this one, and then we can inset polygroup all. So we're doing both of these, and then we cube mesh polygroup these ones out. And then, yeah, go in here and bevel, edge loop complete like this one and then this one and then if you wanted to round these out it'd be an insert multiple edge loops and we can do interactive elevation and we can just like pull this out and round it out and once you've done that once 
I think you should be able to just tap on here and just match that. Uh, and then again, you got all these poly groups hanging out. You're going to hit Control W, make them all one, or again, go back down and group by normals and get any of those back. This one here, and then we could just do like another delete polygroup all, and then close convex hole. Bring, and dial that in. All in polygroup. Did you have a specific video for, for Spotlight? Um, probably some. So if you go to my YouTube channel and you go to videos, give it a second because it's being slow. Oh, right down there. And then do Spotlight. Oh, yep. That's what I was waiting for. I swear. Let's go to search and do Spot. Um, so this spotlight, oh boy, it's being a pain in the ass. Spotlight, there we go, spotlight. Mm. Maybe it'll work on your machine. Um, type in spotlight, you'll see there are spotlight videos in my videos there. Probably the easiest way to find it. Uh, going through my playlist I know is a bit trying, so I apologize for that. Um, let's see, Zebra Sith, I like that one. Let's go with that. Um, and then using multiple references. Yeah, so you could, that very first, you know what, let's do this. I do know where that is. So if we go to, for example, I don't know why it's kicking me back. What a disaster. YouTube. Um, maybe because I'm live streaming, I don't know on YouTube should make a difference. Um, what am I looking for here? So we're going to, I want to say Lumi questions. It's a pretty old one. No, Gemini questions maybe. Yeah, I need to go through and clean these, these up. I, I, I'm aware. God, what a pain in the butt. Let's go to videos here. I'm gonna try this one more time. Oh, you know what? Let's see if I don't hit enter. No, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, I hit enter and then it wants to refresh. Hmm, let me try this. I did it. Ah, uh, you. Mm. Why are you doing this, YouTube? Oh boy. Well, basically, you bring in your spotlight reference, and then you can use the movie, um, movie modifiers timeline. Let's go to a show. So we got our movie show up here, and then you bring in your spotlight, and then you got your reference set up. Then you hit Shift S. Well, you don't have to hit Shift S. You're going to save this position, so you're going to tap here, and then you've got another reference over here, let's say, on your spotlight, and then you got another reference over here, let's say, on your spotlight. So now you can just hit the use the arrow keys to go between those different views as you're modeling. And then also, uh, you don't need to have this showing either, so I usually get rid of this turn off show and I can still have that functionality and then if I need that timeline again I go turn it back on. <clears throat> Is it better to project displacement in Mari than do it in ZBrush? You know the pros and cons. Projecting displacement. Um, boy it's been a long time since I've used Mari. Um, I really don't know to be honest with you. Um, I don't know if it was better or worse or what the difference would be projecting to geometry. I mean, I would probably do it in ZBrush just because that's what I'm more comfortable in, but um, better, I don't know. How do you retopo a mech guy like that manually or with your new Houdini method? I would do it with Houdini first and just get it in game and then see, you know, usually, first I would get it in using Houdini because it only takes a couple minutes and then we can just evaluate and make sure everything's cool um, and, and on big picture and then probably it's good enough. I mean, as long as you're, you don't have a ton of shells in your UVs and 
Uh, if you have to hand it off to a third party, uh, they're probably looking for very clean geometry, in which case, yeah, you would just manually go in and use ZBrush or Topo Gun or Maya Max Moto, choose your poison for manually retopologizing. Blech. Cool. Um, the wireframe on this guy won't be, I mean, he's not, he's not, a, uh, you know what, I decimated him down. But he, he wouldn't be, he's not a sub-D mesh at all. If I, if I wanted to, I could make a sub-D version of this stuff, but um, let me see if I have another, maybe have one that's a little bit more, because I do, I do DynaMesh, but that's destructive. Um, I do sub-D modeling with ZeriMesh or sometimes, um, most of the time if I can help it, or just manually re-topologizing and then using dynamic subdivisions for that type of thing. But yeah, I don't have a really good example of that, I don't think. Let's see. Is this thing all broken out? Yeah, some, most of this old stuff is going to be not that great. A bunch of dynamished or decimated stuff. Yeah, so like this is just like a box modeled thing. Um, I do a lot more dynamic subdivisions than I used to, even you know, this this is actually pretty old, but yeah, we do we do more dynamic. Uh, do I use Blender? No, but a good Blender guy that I know of um, Jerry Perkins, Master Z on one thousand one. I can link you guys to his channel. So if you want to learn Blender. I'll go ahead and copy paste this to you. And um, he's the hard ops guy. And he's got a lot of cool stuff. And we're also learning Moi 3D as well. And uh, Fusion 360, if you haven't used it, might be interesting to you, you all. Um, if you want, if you go to my playlist here, this one will work. It's not going to try and kick me out. You go all the way to the very bottom here. You got a Fusion 360 quick start. So soon we'll have a Moi 3D quick start. Uh, so much so. Cool. Yeah, and hopefully the 2018 stuff's going to come out soon. I meant to do it two weeks ago, and then one week ago, and then this week. And what a nightmare. Okay, this ZBrush is getting a little heavy. Let me go ahead and kill that. Okay, um, can you show me what the heck the new volume modifiers are in ZBrush? Volume modifiers. Maybe? Doesn't it? Uh, Dynamesh not as good as Sculptor's Pro in your opinion. Um, I think it's just as good, if not better, in a lot of situations. So if we go to here, make Polymesh 3D. So you said defer modifiers, volume modifiers. Uh, refresh my memory. Volume modifiers. W. Somewhere in here. Like project primitive? I'm not sure what the volume modifiers are. That doesn't ring a bell. Um, but yeah, the Dynamesh stuff is just going to be... Dynamesh is going to give you an envelope of your object. Sculptress Pro and Tessa tessimating and tessellating uh, dynamically isn't going to give you an envelope. So I use them both depending on what I'm working on or what the final result I want to be. Uh, can we create a game asset only using ZBrush? Yeah. Yeah, you could. Um, usually at the low poly stage, I end up having to go, um, you know, to other UV programs, uh, possibly. Um, setting edge normals too is a little bit, I think ZBrush just does all hard or all soft on export. There's no way to control like, I want to make hard edges on my UV boards and that type of stuff. So it's a little bit limiting in that sense, but you can certainly just make your low poly geometry in ZBrush, sure. Uh, Polygroup had a useful way to auto retopologize a mech. Yeah, um, especially if you have a DynaMesh surface. For example, let's see, um, crease, 15, dynamic, apply, dynamesh, 
And let's say if we wanted like clip. So if we want to make like a mech piece like so. So here's our mech piece that we want to uh, retopologize here and we have no polygroups here. So you could conceivably use polygroup it to make your polygroups here um, because when you go down here and you want to do like a group by normals, um, it's not going to really work that well. So in this case, um, let's go ahead and smooth those corners out a little bit. So control W, make it all in polygroup. So if we go back to Z plugin, polygroup it. And we say, uh, let's grab this surface here. And we grab the surface here, the surface here, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. And then we say, uh, well, extend may not help. Let's go ahead and grab this one. And then mm -hmm, extend those out and then say, okay. So now I've got all these polygroups. So then um, you could use Z-Remesher maybe. We'll give it a shot. So we go down here to Z-Remesher. Well, let's do this geometry, Z-Remesher. Uh, we're going to keep our groups, smooth our groups. We probably need that up a little bit because these groups are so janky. You could go through here and do a quick um, polish by features just to kind of smooth those lines out. And then uh, target polygon count is what it is. And then we could do adaptive size. Well, we do, these are just settings you're gonna have to play with depending on your object type and how it's laid out. Oh, and also you probably wanna project back. So we probably want to duplicate this off first. Go into solo mode here. And then let's do our adaptive size down to zero. We'll see what that does first. Might be a little bit harder to get these small transitions. So that way, you know, you're getting a somewhat low res object. You can keep projecting back. Uh, no. And let's turn off poly paint. We don't need all that. There we go. Um, project back here. And then we could do, do half maybe. And then project and then half. And just keep knocking that down. If you start running into trouble areas here or um, you can just go through here and start manually cleaning up like, okay, I don't need all these edges. So insert single edge loop and just hold down alt. And you can just kill all these ones that really aren't helping your form. Occasionally you can go through here under edge loop and you can say delete loops uh, based on this angle. So then you can just kind of dial that in and get rid of any extraneous loops. May or may not work that great. Um, so this might give you a head start in retopologizing on hard surface. Um, it's not great. Better than nothing, maybe. Oh, I need those to maintain the form. So here we don't. I'm just kind of going through here, and anything that's flat, obviously I don't need. This is all flat. Don't need all this. And then on these curved surfaces, I do need those to maintain the form. It looks like that did get rid of that loop, which I didn't want. But I think you guys get the idea. And then over here, you can just get rid of these. Oops. Let's go select rectangle here and here delete hidden and then you can just close convex hole back here and you know what I guess all this flat stuff too you, okay before we do that let's go to insert Is that flat I guess it's not flat let's pretend it was flat just so we can see how far down we can get this thing Okay, and then on these ones, if you did want to do like every other one, because it's low poly, you could certainly do that. Kind of dial in exactly that resolution you're looking for. And then we go through here, and do a closed convex hole. And then you can collapse this to one of these edges here. So you can just go through here. Let's turn off X symmetry. And we'll just collapse this edge down. Or something like that. I don't know. And you could even still do if we go out of solo mode, you can still do a project all. Make sure your verts are sitting right on top of each other. So, I don't know. Not ideal, depending on what you're working on, but... Cool, cool. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, new stuff Paul was showing volume. Volume. Let me look through my notes. I really have no idea. Um, let's see. Uh, what am I looking for here? Oh, yeah. So Google Drive. And we have 2018. Let me do a search. Volume, I have zero instances of volume in my ZBrush 2018 notes. So I'm not sure what that is. Uh, but I am behind on watching ZBrush stuff for sure. I need to, I need to catch back up on that. Uh, how do you reset the center of an organic shape to mirror and weld with symmetry? Um, so if we had an organic shape, what am I looking for here? And we go ahead and do our see, cleanup. Uh, way up here. Clean tool master, sorry. And then dynamic, let's do DS all. And then merge visible. So we have an organic object. And we want to, this pivot is somewhere else. Uh, we want to reset this. Let's say we have X turned on. So we have uh, X symmetry on this object. So we hold on Alt, and you see this little go to unmesh mesh center. If you tap that one, it's going to go to the center of the half of the object because you have X turned on. If you turn X off, which is toggling transform activate symmetry off, you hold on Alt and go to mesh center. It'll snap here. You can also, if your gizmo is like here, you can say go to unmatched mess center in the middle and then hold down alt and do this reset orientation and then you can tap x back on so you have x symmetry back on and your gizmo is right down the middle of your object um, but when you do a mirror and weld um, that's not has doesn't have too much to do with gizmo that's just your object so if your object is off what you can do is you go over here to geometry and then position and you're going to see oh my x position is set to a weird thing so hit it zero and then I'll go ahead and snap it back. Um, however, if that's not available to you or your object is just moved uh, for some reason um, and there is no X position you need to dial in, uh, what you can do is you can hold down, you can hit W, you can hold down Alt and go to Unmesh Mesh Center of this object and then you can hit this, um, without holding down Alt, uh, hit this Home and that'll snap it to the middle of your uh, world here and that way it'll go to the middle. Um, there's also some S pivot stuff you could do under transform. Maybe you can set your pivot point. Um, another thing you can do if you don't worry about, if you're not too concerned about the size, you can go over here to deformation unify, and that'll snap it to the middle of your world uh, and put it. Hit, put, it'll put the center of his bounding box at zero 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 as well. So be careful of that. Um, and that'll just zero these positions out basically. Um, Dallas says, how's it going? I'm going, going good, I think. Um, I think we got about 15 more minutes before I have to head out. Uh, is there a big difference if you don't Dynamesh before decimating? Um, yeah, if you Dynamesh before, so if you, so right now, this thing is all, it's still separate parts. So if I hold down Control Shift and we grab his head here and do Control Shift A, it's going to grow visible. And you can see this is just one small part of him. It looks like I grabbed all the way through him. But um, he's still split up in parts. So if I were to go over here to Decimation Master and then Preprocess Current. Basically what it's going to do is decimate all of these pieces individually which is okay depending on what you're making. So you that may be a desired result. So if I get this thing going, okay. So uh, decimate this thing down to like 10K for a low res. We'll decimate it down. And now I have my game res geometry. If I go over here and do an auto group, so you're gonna see he's still split up into separate pieces. However, if that isn't the result, you wanted, say you wanted this to be all one piece like for a statue or something, uh, if we just crank up this resolution, so now we got our object, and then we go preprocess current. I like just sitting here with dead air, waiting. Okay, and then we'll drop this down to 10K, and then decimate current. 
And now if I do an auto groups, you're going to see he's all just one piece. So that's just a way to create an envelope, all one piece of, a, of an object here, so that he's, um, well, he doesn't have any real internal spaces here. This is just his mouth bag and stuff like that. But we do have back of his, you know, any any place basically, you know, it stuck his tail to his shell like we dealt with earlier in the channel. Um, and possibly some holes in here that we, you know, if you if you when you if you do go back and watch this, you'll see us cleaning up these little problem areas before we um, move forward. So that's something you'd also want to do. But that's just the difference between the two. Can we import a posed character to ZBrush from Maya? Sure, uh, FBX or OBJ should be able to do that, no problem. Uh, oh, the project primitives, yeah. So that would be, um, if we take this object here we were working with, delete, okay. Um, and I think on our last channel we touched on this a little, oh, maybe we didn't, I'm trying to remember. Uh, so if we go over here, let's turn off X symmetry, and we go into project primitive. So now we got all these little uh, cones here. So if I, you're going to see this gizmo now controls a primitive object that I have in here. So I'm basically projecting this spherical primitive into my object. If I pull this down to a certain point, or I pull it out to a certain point, I should say, it'll invert that. So it actually pokes into my object here. So now that we have this project primitive, if you go over here to where it says um, new surface, I'm gonna turn that on one uh, temporarily. So we can actually see here is the new surface we're creating. If you want a different type of primitive to use, you can change the primitive type from one. Well, if you keep it on one, we have a modifier here so you can change it from a square to a diamond. And then at 0.5, it, it's a circle. So we'll just type in, um, Hold down shift and we'll just snap that to 0.5. You don't have to type anything in. Uh, you can also clip it from the sides and backs if you want to. So for example, if we wanted to, if we push this in, you're going to see it's two separate primitives. If we change this uh, new surface back down to zero, you're going to see it's projecting that primitive onto the object. So we can project that primitive. We can flatten that down. We can say, okay, you know what? I like that. So I'm going to go over here to our accept, and we're going to accept that primitive. And then if we pull up again, we're projecting that exact same primitive that we had. Uh, so we scale this down. You're going to see we're going to project that new flattened top primitive. If you don't want to flatten that top, you can pull this out. Or you can go over here and you can do a full reset, and that'll just give you, you know, reset back to that original um, circular primitive. So uh, let's change that back to. Uh, what do we want to work on? So we'll say new surface temporarily so we can see the primitive. And uh, like I said before, if we go over here to our modifier here, we can go from square to diamond. Uh, hold down shift to snap. We'll go back to 0.5. If we do primitive type of one, we can go from square to diamond. Wait, is that zero or one? Do we start at zero? No, we start at primitive type one. So primitive type two, we have two bars here. Um, we can go from tightening, and if you go to the top, you're gonna see we're tightening these angles in a square pattern, and then we're tightening these angles in a, in a diamond pattern, and then we're tightening the angle, these angles in a square pattern. Um, so you can dial between those shapes, and then you can go over here, and you can go to a cylinder, to a diamond cylinder, or a top, so if you go here, it's going to be a cylinder. And again, if you look at it from this angle, it's a circle. And then if you go to this extreme, this is a diamond. Or if you go to the top, it's a circle. So it's a kind of a mix between a circle and a diamond. Um, and then if we go to primitive, and you can mix those as much as you want. So if you go zero in this direction, and then zero in this direction, or zero in this direction, I guess that just makes it a square. So you can kind of play with these values here. We'll go ahead and set those back to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and then primitive type 3, whoa. Uh, um, um. Where'd it go, where'd it go? There it goes. Uh, primitive type 3, there we go. We have a cone, oh, we have a tapered, we have a cylinder that tapers from one end to the other. And wait for it. And then we have a cylinder that turns into a box or a diamond 
depending on how you're looking at the object. And then primitive type 4, we have a, uh, from one extreme, well in the middle, you have a, um, what is that thing, a torus? <laughs> so you can go thick to thin on the first modifier, and then on the second modifier it'll flatten out to a diamondy torus or a cylindery torus with an inner radius there. So uh, if you turn this back to a, a new surface back down to zero, it's going to disappear because it's not interacting or it's not projecting through the surface here. But if we push back through and we scale this down, we can start making the surface project through. Uh, if we turn off line here, you're going to say this is the result we're getting. So we can kind of just push the cylinder in. If you want more resolution, uh, one of these is resolution, maximum displacement, opacity, grouping, and tessellate. So you can crank up this tessellate here to get a nicer uh, transition. So we can scale this up and down and get nice complex results. And if you like what you're looking at, you can hit W and say accept. And now we're back to where we started. And now we've got a nice transition from a sphere to a flat sphere that was flattened and then pushing in a cylinder or a torus that was a, turned into a cylinder with an end radius. Then you could just start creating complex hard surface slash organic shapes, depending on what you're going for. Can you make a tutorial sometime on how to sculpt a mech? Yes, I would love to do that. Um, I would say soon, but man, I just, I got to find time to sit down and do all this stuff. But that'd be a really fun one. And he says, I'm super cool. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but you know what? We'll go with I'm pretty, I'm pretty cool, dude. Uh, Gizmo plugin, a new option for R8. Is that Gizmo a plugin? Oh, it's a new option. So that it, if you want to, you can go to my YouTube channel. And if you go to the ZBrush for R8, what's new, that'll take you through the intricacies of the Gizmo. Man, I can't find anything on my channel right now. <gasps> Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Seriously. Mm. All right, here. Oh, oh, that is my whole playlist. Uh, can I view this? Mm. Okay, so ZBrush 4R8, what's new? Now, if I click on this, is it going to keep me there? Yeah, okay. All right, so this link will work for you. Zebra's for eight, what's new? And the first four or five are gizmo specific. Cool. Uh, tutorials of mine for game characters. Uh, anything I make is for gamers purposes. I, I haven't never worked on movies or anything. Um, so on the high res side, any of my tutorials should work. On the game resing side, the oh, I haven't really done too much. I've um, let me think. I've done a little bit. If you go to the live stream highlights, there's some stuff on like, or maybe not even the live stream highlights right now, but like using polygrouping, kind of like we did on the hard surface. You can also do that on a head. So for example. If we go over here to our streaming, old man, Chops McGee. Boy, he looks creepy with that poly paint on. So if we do this here, let me go back down here, um, using poly groups to and Ziri mesher, and then also using uh, Z spheres to retopologize. Let me see if I do have that. Give me a second. Live stream highlights. I don't know why looking at it in this view is such a pain. I mean, it doesn't have to be live stream highlights, so live stream full episodes. Um, you can just kind of hover over here and see if Pathwork 40, 39, 38, ooh, it's been a while, I guess. Yes, yeah, somewhere in here we did the Chops McGee, and then also this Anteater thing we did, uh, Zero Mesher Game Res 2. Um, highlights, there we go. There we go. Um, Boolean surfboard topology. We did okay. Mouth, bag, and nostrils topology, masking, and polygroups, polygroup head cleanup, and Z remesh. So yeah, this one here, videos five, six, and seven, might be a good one for you. 
kind of takes you through a bunch of different tools. <laughs> Sorry about that, Roman. Uh, yeah, we got about three minutes left. Uh, is there any way to have an R8 ZBrush with interface of 4R7? You can set up, you can make custom interfaces um, to your heart's content. Um, all you need to do is go up here to Preferences, Config, and then hit Enable Customize. Um, in fact, if you go to Intro to ZBrush Part 2, Uh, Intro to ZBrush Part 2 on my YouTube channel. That'll take you through custom menu and custom interface. So you can just set a custom interface. There might be one if you go up here to this top part. Uh, let me go ahead and turn that off because I don't want to mess up my stuff. Um, this load previous user, next interface colors, previous and next and user interface layout. So you can try these and see if there's any of these strike your fancy. Or you can just manually set up exactly what you want your interface to be. Um, get rid of it. I mean, I, I did that here. I got rid of all these extraneous things I never use. I just dumped them out of here. And uh, along the top here, too, it's not so bad here, but at work for some reason, um, I kept losing my active points, which I sometimes like to look at. In fact, yeah, so, so let's just do that real quick. So preferences, um, enable customize this home page. I don't need I'm going to hold down control alt and just drag this off. Um, light box, I don't need because I can just hit the comma key so I can get rid of that. And then uh, if you do stuff a lot, like say we want to go into Clean Tool Master, and we always want to do DS uh, dynamic subdivisions to all, I can just hold down Control Alt, I can just drag that out, I'm going to stick that right here. So that way I don't have to go in here every time and look for DS all. So then I just got to go Preferences, Enable Customize Off, and then Preferences, Store Config, and then it'll store my configuration. Um, and all this stuff down here as well. Uh, Baby Bowser all done in ZBrush? Yes! Uh, I wish I had the making of him. I, it was supposed to be for another demo, so I don't have the specific making of him, but anything like this, the stylized stuff, is mostly just started from just primitives. You grab a sphere and another sphere and you clip it and then you make polygroups and you zero mesh it and it just turns into a little fat Baby Bowser. Uh, but if you go back through my channel, I think we do a bit of this work. In fact, this, oh, you know what? I may have lost that. I may have to recreate that offline. The shell that we did, that seems weird. Why would I have lost that? Could have sworn. I saved that one. But maybe not. Oh boy. Well, that shouldn't be too hard to recreate. Cool. Uh, what happened to my picture log stream? It's still there. It just depends on if I'm able to show up on Tuesdays or not. <laughs> cool. Alrighty. Uh, have a sculpt that's supposed to have a tattoo on his arm that lights up. Is there a way to put a stencil of a tattoo on his arm? Would it be a tool to make it light up in key shot? That would be probably a... If you want total control... I would conv I would extract I would mask where I want the tattoo and then extract that and put that as a new uh, different material in Keyshot. Um, if I'm doing this, if I was to do it in Painter, uh, you would just choose. You could just well even in I don't know if in Keyshot you can assign an RGB value like a material ID to a different material with a missive. I haven't tried that. Uh, but in Painter, what you would do is you could take this. And you could tip, put a tattoo on his arm wherever you wanted to. So if we hold down control and we do like drag rect um, the star here. Let's go ahead and subdivide this one more time. There we go. So we have a tattoo on him. Um, you can make this a poly group. Um, but what I would probably end up doing is, let's say, giving this a material ID for painter. So when I take this into substance painter, and he's all big down gamer as I could assign um, tattoo properties to this area and then I can put it make an emissive channel and put that in there so it would glow or uh, be tuned that way um, but yeah if I was doing let's see if I can just do 
delete lower and let's do an extract Ugh. smooth of one thickness of very small you could extract out a shape and you know what I'd probably do is I would just take a star and then use um, use the brush settings to conform that to the surface because yeah doing a different material in key shot might be a little bit I'm not positive on that one Uh, Clean Tool Master is something you can just download from their website, and there's just a lot of different functions that you can use to, like, I want to turn on, delete all my morph targets, or um, clear all my masks and all my subtools, or convert all my dynamic subdivisions to actual subdivisions and all my subtools, that kind of thing. Cool. Thanks for the kind word, Ambient. Glad the um, glad the videos are helping out. I am using the Wacom Intuos Pro. If you go to my hardware section, you know what? I, I that's another thing I need to do is my um, frequently asked questions. I'm gonna I'm I got that up and running, so I'm going to get that. If you go to the description, any any of my hardware stuff should be in here. So if you go to the description of this video here. Um, curves helper, uh, that's another thing. We've covered it in this video. Uh, curves helper is really good. Let's see if this will let me. Oh, and it spits me back out. Um, curve hel curves helper is a very, very cool one. Um, I need to make a full video for that. You know what, before I leave while we're recording, let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and unmask this. Let's go into edit mode here. Okay, everybody ready to do some professional video recording? Okay, I think we're still good. So we're going to talk about Curves Helper right now. So Curves Helper is a way to use Z-spheres to um, control where your curves end up. So if we go to, uh, say, Brush BC or BI Brush Insert, and we grab this Insert Multi Mesh Curve, and we grab any of these, like, say, a hose, we can make a curve brush, and we can make this... Uh, put wherever we want to. Um, if we want, we can take this curve here. It looks like this curve uh, seems to be a little bit busted. So if we go in here to modifiers here, we're going to turn on weld points for this one. Looks like it was off. It's a little bit weird. So uh, we have a curve here. What you can do with this is you're going to go between the stroke and the brush menu and curve mode we cover in Intro to Zebras Part 2, I think. But uh, just a really quick one. You can do like um, as line, so if you turn on as line, you can just pull out a straight line, and then because you have bend turned on, you can do as line, and then you can start bending this. Uh, when your cursor is blue, when your cursor is red, that's going to change the size of the hose. When it's blue, that's going to change what you are allowed to manipulate in here. And if at any point you can go to brush insert and change this, swap this out for, we could put this into like a necklace link. We can just swap this out for the necklace if we want. Um, also, uh, we can hold down control. And in ZBrush 2018, we can now twist along a path here. So you're going to start, you're going to touch it, and then hold down Control, and you can twist. And that's also going to be based on um, your blue size here. So if, we, if, if our cursor is blue, we can make it bigger, and then we can hold down Control and twist along this axis. Looks like it's doing something a little bit weird. Uh, another thing in 2018, you could do Liquid, and you can go through here, and you can pull out. Oops, let's make this a little bit bigger here. There we go. Um, you, instead of... So see how these are these ends are locked. We can now make these longer, however we want between those two points, um, as well as elastic, for example. So now you can go through here and you can make these um, longer. It looks like elastic pulls out to corners, and then liquid is a little bit smoother transition. So that's basic curve functionality. Now, how do you control where this curve goes um, on our object? It'll and if you have snap and bend turned on, uh, it'll snap to your underlying character and it'll also allow you to bend it. If you turn bend off, um, you're no longer allowed to bend it, but it will still snap, snap to the underlying surface. Um, so let's go ahead and unmask all these. And if we go into solo mode here, you're going to see we've been just inserting these onto his body. I'm going to isolate his body, do control shift A, and then delete hidden, geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And we're back where we started. So if I wanted to put those in the very precise places what I can do. I'm going to go to insert Z-sphere. 
And on the Z-sphere here, I'm going to scale this down, go into transparency mode so we can kind of see where this thing's going. And now I can make a Z-sphere chain that's going to dictate where those curves end up. So I'm going to go into, I'm going to scale this down here. I'm going to hit Q and then hold down Shift as I drag these out. And then if I hit W, I can go between moving and drawing Z-spheres. So if we can move these around, I'm going to make my draw size very small. Just tap S and make this small. And we're going to move these things around. So if, for example, I wanted the hose to go from this horn here all the way down to his toe and then wrap around his arm, we can do that with Z-spheres a little bit easier than we could just using curves. So I'm going to go here to here. If I hit Q and I tap at any point along this curve, we can just hit W and then we can just keep adding resolution to this Z-sphere chain. So we can go around his head and let's say we want to go behind his arm. Oops, let's grab just, you can grab the bones in between. You can also rotate, hit R to rotate the bones in between. You can hit E to scale the bones in between, the bones in between here or the joints themselves. Uh, but if we hit W and we just grab this one, it should just pull this point back here. So we're going to go back behind his arm and then forward to his toe. So we're going to keep adding resolution as needed to kind of round these shapes out and get this curve to go exactly where we want. So let's say we want it to go around his face here and up and over and around and towards his knee here. So very quickly we can dial in where we want this curve to go. Now, um, We'll do the quick way first, and I'll show the manual way in a second because it might be useful later. So now that we have the Z-Sphere chain set up, if we go into Curves Helper, and that's going to be under our Z plugins here, Curves Helper. And if you go if you Google Curves Helper ZBrush and click on the useful small Z scripts thread here, you're going to see there's the Curves Helper. You can click on that and you can just download CurvesHelper.zip and that you're going to put into your ZBrush, uh, C Program Files, Pixelogic ZBrush 2018, Z Startup, Z Plug 64. Um, it's just going to be a single Z script, so just copy that zipped Z script, unzip it, and then drag it into here, and then restart ZBrush, and then Curves Helper will be here. Um, so then once you have your Z-Sphere chain laid out, you can do Copy Z-Sphere Chain, and then you can do Create Curve. Now before you do that, you need to have um, just any poly... Uh, any polygon object that you're allowed to put curves on. So what would that be? For example, on this body, anything that doesn't have um, subdivision history. So if we click on any of these ones here, and you go down here to geometry, and we hit Control D, and then we do like B, C, brush, curve, tube, and we try to put a curve on here, it's going to yell at us because we have subdivision level, so it's not going to let us do that. So pick an object, for example, the body here, doesn't have any subdivision history, or you can just put in a null node. So I'm going to do an insert polymesh 3D, and now we just have just a star sitting out there that's just a polymesh. So now I, with this one selected, I can do create curve, and that'll go ahead and create a curve right down that curve chain here. So if we hide our Z-sphere, and then we do brush, insert, curve, and we go back to our necklace here, make the size of what, what you want, and then you can just pass that necklace right through that curve. Um, you can still go through here and modify this, or um, you can also just tap off or go to stroke, curve, delete, curve functions, delete, um, if you don't want to tap off. And we go here, we can do a split mass points. That's under your subtool split menu. And now we have this uh, thing here that we can still go through here and you can use a move brush or whatever you want snake hook to position it however you'd like. The manual way to do that would be to have a Z-sphere chain and if we go down here to adaptive skin with that selected we're going to turn off dynamic res resolution down to zero, density down to one, hit preview and that's just hitting the A key. And you're going to see if we go into solo mode we now have a low res version of this. Let's go ahead and hit make adaptive skin. Uh, we don't need the Z-sphere chain anymore so I'm going to delete it and then select any of these subtools, go to insert and grab the skin Z sphere. So we have the skin Z sphere. This is just polygons now. If you go through here, you can just sculpt on this all you want. I'm going to delete these caps. Hold down control shift, select lasso, hold down alt. 
and we're going to delete all these caps and we're going to go to delete hidden geometry modified topology delete hidden let's hit control w to make this all one polygroup and then using z modeler bzm whoops we can go through here now and we can hover over an edge hit the space bar polygroup a poly loop so we're going to polygroup this one and then polygroup this one and then in between these two, if you hold down control shift and tap between them, you can grab both of these here. Let's go ahead and do another delete hidden. And now when we go to stroke, we can frame our polygroups. That'll put a curve right down the middle of these. And then again, it's just a simple matter of BI brush insert curve. And you can swap this out with a hose. Um, if the hose is sitting on top of this, what you can do is you can go to brush depth and you can lower that down so when you put it on this line it goes right down the middle and then once you're happy with that again you can just tap off um, <clears throat> tap off of the object if it's if it's snapping if it's getting that little rubber band out there you can go in here to stroke and do the uh, curve snap distance make that lower make that like 10 and now you can tap off or if it's just too much trouble again just go in here to stroke Curve functions delete, and that'll delete that curve. And now you can just do under your split menu, which we did before. You can do split mass points, split unmass points. Um, I guess we'll split unmass points here. And now we have a separate subtool with just our hose on it that you can modify as needed. Um, also, another thing you could have done is if we go in here to our stroke menu and we do frame our mesh, you're going to see it's a little bit choppy. Uh, before you frame your mesh you can go and smooth this out or you can do like a polish by features and that'll go ahead and smooth these curves out as well and then you can frame your mesh stroke frame mesh as well as you can go into your stroke options here and you're gonna see if you have um, under curve functions you should have a smooth but I guess we can't smooth this curve set to six. If you hit six it's not gonna do anything. Hmm. So we can't smooth a framed curve, good to know. But um, if you did have a curve dragged out, so let's see if that'll work. Brush, curve. So now that we have a hose, let's make it a little smaller. So now we have a hose assigned. If we go over here, we now have smooth available to us. That's just a hotkey of six. So if you want to smooth this out, just tap six, and then I'll go ahead and smooth that curve out for you. And then um, also, on this here, smooth this curve smoothness, you can deal uh, dial in these settings as much as you need to uh, to smooth those curves out. Exit time and cut. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to head out. Uh, any last minute questions that are quick, I can go ahead and. Um, Pro says, if you haven't recently updated your Wacom drivers, don't. Good to know. I don't think I have. Uh, did you work for Digital Extreme on their Warframe game? I did not. Um, um, um. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, just really quickly, if I miss your question, I apologize in advance. I'm catching up real quick before I have to head out. Have I tried Zebra 2018? What do you think about Sculptors Pro? If you go back uh, just one episode, I think, in my uh, live stream, we went over 2018, most of the functionality in the last live stream. It's great. So right mouse button becomes unresponsive. Oh, boy. Uh, Gladio says, is there anything new in Zebra that would help adding bevels on sharp edges easier after using Booleans? Yeah. Um... Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Give me another... Give me some time on that one. There's some stuff in my head that I want to say could help. Um, but not, nothing really elegant, I should say. You can try using the new Project Primitives, uh, but that might be a, more of a headache for you in, in particular. Uh, Booleans are a little bit more controllable, I guess. Cool. All righty, everybody. Thanks for... Um, is there a list of must-need plugins? There is... So, yeah, let me... I'm going to link you to this, too. Um, so, 
useful small scripts. This is a good one to go through. And also, if you just Google, um, I always want to hide this for some reason. So we're going to do um, ZBrush. You can even just go uh, ZBrush downloads. Just Google that and go to their download center. And ZBrush plugins. Now these ones at the top, you're going to already have installed. Go all the way down to the bottom where it says, uh, careful, you could ruin your life by installing these. Don't worry about that. So all of these ones are really cool. Um, I would just download them all. Why not? And then uh, install them in that exact same place I showed you. And those are good ones. Cool. All righty. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank, can I spell this? A-N-K-S, everybody. And I will see you, I think, next week. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be here Tuesday, though, so probably not on Pixel Logic. But, um, all righty. Thanks, everybody. I will catch you on the flip side, and I'm going to try and do a quick edit on the two things we talked about. Man, I just cannot get this chroma key to chrome me out. I get too hot in the lights. Oh, boy. New setup. Maybe I need to, like, powder my neck or something before I come in here. Anyway, thanks, everybody. See you all next time.